Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Rochelle with Losing It on Keto. Um, the other day when I made the uh, pizza crust slash bread as well as the soup with the keto chow chicken soup base, I told you I had some ideas that I was noodling. And so today what I have for you is the, um, is, is the execution of one of those ideas. I don't know if this is going to work, but I think it's going to. I've made a couple of um, attempts at a, at, at a dough that didn't work out. And I'm thinking I got a new idea. So let me, let me walk you through what I'm intending to do. Um, the other day I, um, I ordered the stuffler and you saw my meatball stuffler. Well, at that same time when I was reviewing some things, I found uh, at the same time, the um, mini pot pie maker. And I knew I had the Cheeto soup base, and I know I've got the beef one, and I've got the tomato basil. So I was getting ideas for, especially because it's winter time, um, we want comfort food. Um, so I was getting ideas about what to do with that. And one of, the, obviously, the natural ideas that I had with the... Um, with the chicken cauliflower soup that I made with the keto chow um, was to use that as a gravy base or say a pasta sauce. And so I've been, um, no pun intended, noodling um, some thoughts on that. And I have one of those that I want to execute now. So what I'm intending to do is I'm intending and attempting to make a chicken pot pie, protein sparing, modified fast chicken pot pie. And I've looked, I cannot find a recipe that exists on the internet. Maybe my search is poor, but I could not find one. So I think this, this may be the first of its kind use, and I should qualify that, um, using the, uh, mini, mini dash here, but, but even so I haven't found one in the oven. I found keto, um, chicken pot pies, but not a protein sparing one nor one made in something that could be ultra, ultra easy to do. Very convenient to do. So that's what I'm attempting to do. So, um, so the steps now, I have uh, six ounces of ground, browned ground chicken. So this is cooked ground chicken. And if you've been following the pattern here, the ground chicken is the base of a lot of my protein sparing modified fast recipes. So I've got six ounces and so I'm thinking that would be at least two pot pies, maybe three. I'll see how the mixture is because this is mini. Uh, but anyways, this I got that done. And then what I was thinking is I'm going to make a gravy similar in portion to what I did with the soup. And then I'm going to add broccoli. And so that combination is going to be my pot pie filling. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make indigo neelys. Um, egg tortillas, which are like the um, egg -like, egg, homemade egg life wraps. So I'm going to uh, attempt to do that, to use that as my crust, and then see if I can pull off this pot pie. And um, one of the other simplifications, and I debated whether to just go buy them and do it, is to just purchase the egg life wraps and put them on here, put your filling, and, and that would even be faster. But... Um, but I know if the homemade works, I know the, the store-bought ones will, will work. So I'm going to attempt to do that. We'll see if, if I succeed. Um, uh, before I proceed on with the next segment, I'll just add one other thought, which is I attempted to use the keto chow chicken soup base, a form of the crust slash bread recipe as my um, dough for this. And it didn't work out. And it didn't work out because, and I'll show you what my attempt was. It didn't work out because, um, in, in fact, I'm going to show you something here. And then I'll explain why it didn't work out. So I thought if I took that recipe and I par-baked it, um, I thought it would be pliable enough to fit in here. And I had this one bread. So it came out like that, and then I sliced it lengthwise 
using this as my guide. So in this, um, it, with this mini pie uh, dash mini pie maker comes this guide. So it shows you, it, this is like your circle cutout to say, this is what you use as your guide. Let me make sure you can see that. It says pie base with an arrow. So pointing down, which is this here circle, that's your, that's your pie base that fits here. And then the top, if you flip that over, it says pie top. So that fits this here. So I used this as my guide and I was really excited when I got it cut lengthwise. And I said, wow, look at that, that's a perfect fit. And then this one, flip it over, perfect fit. So I thought I was in business. But then what happened is when I went to put this in and push down, you see it cracked. So obviously it's not gonna hold the filling. So I'll find another purpose for this. But I started thinking, well, what could be more pliable? And then I had the thought about the egg, -like, uh, egg life wraps. And then I recall Indigo Neely, as well as Cooking with Christy, they have done homemade versions of that. So I thought I'd give that a go and see if I can make that work. So that's my thought process. I think it's pretty solid thinking. And now we'll just see if, if I can pull this off. So, um, so come back for the next segment when, um, when I'm going to start to prepare the, the chicken gravy and the broccoli. And then after that, we'll prepare the, um, the egg like, uh, the egg wraps. Okay. Be back in a sec. Okay, guys, I'm back for this segment. Now here's what I've got. I've got a pan on the stove and I did some quick math, um, leveraging my, um, soup that I made with the keto chow and the chicken, chicken stock. So in that recipe, if you recall, I had 45 grams of the keto um, savory chicken stock, um, uh, chicken soup base to 12 ounces of chicken stock. So I certainly don't need that amount of liquid for my intentions here. So I was thinking I needed a quarter of that. And then if I find I need more liquid, then I can go up from there, okay? So what I'm going to do is make a quarter. And so what that equates to is 11 and a quarter uh, grams of keto chow, chicken uh, soup base, and three ounces of chicken stock. So I have my three ounces of chicken stock here. So I pour that in and I've got my chicken stock there. Let me get a whisk, a smaller whisk. Um, I know I have a mini one but I don't have that readily available. So I'll just go with this little bit bigger one. Um, and then I have the 11 and a quarter grams of um, chicken stock, I mean, uh, keto um, chicken soup base. So I'm just gonna whisk that in. It's actually a little bit more liquidy than I was expecting and my ratios aren't off, but it's okay. I intend to put some, some um, broccoli in here that's going to absorb that, but I also think this thickens over time. So let me see, because right now I've got more of a, more of a liquid than I, than I want. Um, let me turn the heat down. And then um, what I did is I took the frozen broccoli. Let me, let me show you this. Let me see if I have one handy. Uh, I don't have one handy. But the frozen broccoli are in pretty big florets, and I obviously don't want those for the size of this um, pot pie, you know, the size of this pot pie. So I'll show you what I did, is I put the frozen broccoli in my food processor, and I pulsed it to make the florets smaller. Okay, and that's what I've got here in this bowl. And I'll, oh, and this, look how nicely this is already thickened up. Um, and I'll make use of this broccoli, the, the smaller bites. So it was actually good. I think I'm going to get in the habit of doing that. 
of taking it out of the bag they come with and, and do this and storing it this way because I like the size better unless I'm I'm making steamed but for recipes and such this is one I like so anyways I'm gonna take a handful of this frozen broccoli and just add it here And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, let me wash my hand. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some ground chicken to this. Well, actually I'm gonna add all the ground chicken and then I'll use a portion of this filling for the, for the pot pie. So let me add the chicken. Get that all in incorporated. Okay, and now it's looking for the amount of chicken and broccoli I have. It looks like I need a little bit more gravy. Um, so let me, um, let me see here. Yeah, let me, let me add a little bit more and I'll, I'll come back and then we'll be ready to, um, start the, um, uh, mimic uh, egg-like wraps, uh, wraps, okay? So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. I don't think all that time I was doing that, you could actually see what I was doing. But, um, but anyways, this has come together just the way I wanted it, if you can see that here. So it's really thickened up nicely, just the way I want my my uh, pot pie filling. So let me give you the final um, proportions, which is for the six ounces of chicken and the handful of broccoli that you saw me add, the pulsed broccoli, so they're small, small bits, it uh, came out to be 17 grams of the keto chow chicken uh, savory soup base to four and a half ounces of chicken stock, okay? So that ratio for the six ounces with the handful of broccoli has got me to my desired um, pot pie um, consistency. It's not too liquidy, okay? All right. So I'm gonna take that off the heat and I'm gonna come back now, now that the pot pie filling is done we're gonna come back and let's uh, let's prepare the the egg uh, wraps, okay? And then uh, after that, we'll put this in the pot pie maker and see if uh, we have a success. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, I'm back for this segment. So you can see I've got the griddle set up, and I got the ingredients for the egg like egg life wrap. Say that fast three times. Um, Indigo Neely's recipe. So um, for the size that we're making, so it's three small or two bigger ones, and I'm gonna go with the two bigger ones because I wanna make my, I wanna be able to measure them out according to this, and I wanna make sure they're not too small. So, um, so I'm gonna go with the bigger ones because I can always cut them down. I can't make it bigger if I make them too small. So anyways, I've got the griddle heating. And to this recipe, it's one quarter cup of water and one tablespoon of water or 71 milliliters. So that's what I have. And then it's a tablespoon of beef gelatin or 10 grams. So I've got 10 grams of the beef gelatin. So that's gonna, I can just put that right on and it'll start blooming. And then I've got um, 15 grams of egg white protein powder, okay? So I'm just gonna put that right on the top. And then I am going to whisk this. Let me get a whisk. I should have got that already and been prepared. I want a small one. Oops, this'll work. Okay. No, that's too big. Um, let me not. 
mess around with that. Let me just get my little whisk here. Okay. So I don't know if you can see, I think, you, yeah, you can see that. So I'm just whisking this here. This will whisk together real easily and come out to be a batter type consistency. The griddle's ready to go as soon as this is ready to go. You see that? Let me get a spatula, and I'm curious to know if uh, I'm not going to do it, but I'm curious to know if I leave that sit for a little bit, if that even gets thicker. But I believe the gelatin it should keep it from spreading when I pour this out and that I would have to spread it like Neely did if I wanted um, uh, thinner ones. So here we go. So I'm looking for a thicker one. So let's see what we get with that. And I make another one here. With the understanding that I know the base is a little bigger than the top. So I'm thinking this one is going to be the, the base. And I know Neely um, spread hers out to thin them, but like I said, for our purpose, I don't want to do that. But we're experimenting, and if I screw this up, I'll repeat it adjusting for my mistakes, but hopefully this is right. And keep in mind, I've, I've got this in mind, right? So this looks like it's absolutely perfect for the bottom, if I do say so myself. And then in regards to the top, I mean, come on, I eyeballed that. Can't be any more perfect than that. Okay, I think my spatula is a little too thick. So let me find a thinner one. And let me have a smaller one on standby in case I need it. So I've got these two on standby if needed, but I'm, I'm going to try and use this uh, cookie one. Coming together nicely. Oh, look at that. Look how nice that is. Yep, yep, yep. So far, so good. Thank you, Neely. All right. All right, so I think we're I think we're set. So next up, let's try and pull this together with the pot pie. Uh, stay tuned, cross your fingers. Okay guys, I am back. It's been a little while. Um, uh, that great idea I had to um, pulse the broccoli. Uh, lesson learned, if you ever do that, make sure you hold your hand on the top of the blender, on the top of the food processor because uh, frozen broccoli is strong enough to push the release open and so it shot in my kitchen. So I had a little bit of a mess to clean up. So anyways, it allowed uh, the pot pie maker here to get hot, plenty hot, because it took me a while. All right, so last time we were here. Okay, I took these off 
They're pretty pliable, like I said, very much like those egg life wraps. So I'm thinking this is going to be the bottom, the base. This is going to be the top. I showed you that this is the, the guide that they give you. So you see how perfect that is. And then this one here, pretty, pretty darn close. I could have guessed made them a little more of a circle than an oval, but I think this is going to work. And then of course I've got the, the pot pie uh, mixture, the, the middle, the filling. So this has been sitting for a little while. So a lot of the juices have incorporated. Okay, so as I said, the moment of truth here. So open this up because like I said, this is plenty hot. All right, here is the base. Please work, please work, please work, please work. All right, I've already seen a success step because unlike what I tried to do with the um, keto chow pizza crust slash bread, this did not break, okay? What it isn't doing is it isn't holding in place. Maybe I just need to be a little bit more for forceful and not be afraid of it. And maybe I need to have some mixture to hold it. Let me try that to get some weight in here to hold it down. Yeah. And it looks like I should have gone a little bit bigger. So I'm anticipating a problem here that it's not big enough. I hope you can see that. You see it's not coming through to here, but if that's, if that's my one fail, that'll be easy to correct. But so far I'm liking what I'm seeing here. All right, let's put, let's put this on. In fact, this may cover that and we may be good here. So let me put that on there. Okay, let's close this and let's see what we get here. This is seeming like it's a little too thick because if you can see, it's not closing. And then you see I've got some here. So I think I will have to thin these out when I make them again. But that's okay. That's an easy adjustment. Okay, let's let this cook and we'll come back and see what we get. And then again, fingers crossed. And you'll see there's a little bit of filling that's oozing out, but not much at all. But fingers crossed, we come back, we'll see if we have a success or not. Stay tuned. Hi guys, we're back. It's been, uh, I don't know, four to five minutes. I was actually, I hadn't even opened the book. I was so excited to try this. So I was reading this while waiting for this. And so I think I'm ready to show this to you. I'm not exactly sure how to take this out. I don't know if I should use a fork. I'm going to try this um, silicone mini spatula and see what I get here. But, um, but anyways, let me see how well you can see that. Let's see if we can zoom in here. And just this. Sorry about that. All right, let's see how well you can see this. You see how that's browning up? And keep in mind that even Indigo said that hers didn't really brown. And, and so the fact that this browned at all, I, I'm pretty impressed by. And um, one other thing I wanted to note is that this says to use an egg wash on the top. So I'm sure if I would have done that, we would have had more of a browning effect. But look at how beautifully this is coming out. We're stuck over here for some reason. Let's see why. Oh, because a little bit of the mixture oozed out. Look at how easy that came out. Look at this. That's the mixture that came out. Can you guys see that? Look at that.
Wow! There's a little bit, you know, because we were short on the bottom here, this didn't fully seal. I'll show that to you. See how that didn't fully seal because the dough was short here? But like I said, that, that's easily adjustable. Not bad for the first attempt, I'd say. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let this cool. And then after it cools, let's come back and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut into it. Okay? And then I have an idea that I may execute. I have plenty of filling still. Given that I thought the wraps were the way to go, but now I'm thinking maybe more the crepe recipe was the way to go. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to repeat that with this. So I'm going to ponder that while this is cooling and, uh, and come back in the seg in next segment. And in the next segment, I may have another pot pie brewing. Okay. Um, stay tuned. So I decided to go ahead and make the uh, egg white crepes because I'm pretty sure that that thinner that thinner type wrap is what is needed for the protein sparing modified fast pot pie. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make that here. The griddle's hot. Um, the recipe for the crepes is it doesn't have any water. And it doesn't have the egg white protein powder. It's three large egg whites. I used the carton, you know, slash liquid eggs. And that's three, uh, 138 grams. And then it's one tablespoon of beef gelatin powder, which is 10, 10 grams. And you just whisk that up. And, uh, and it gets foamy. And then um, you, you see how it behaves on the hot griddle here. So in this case, I'm making two because I'm, and I'm mindful of the size of each um, when it comes to the top and the bottom of the, of the protein of the uh, pot pie. And I'm also mindful to make sure that I get circles here um, so that it seals because uh, the top on the on the first try was a little bit of an oval and it didn't seal with the bottom if you recall in that prior segment where I showed you that that part so uh so once again I'm, I'm mindful of the size of the cutout and I know that the bottom is bigger than than the top so this one here I'm making um with the intention of this being the the base of the pot pie And then these cook up pretty fast. So as soon as I make this more of a circle, these will be ready to flip. Uh, ready to flip. And one thing you can do for both the uh, egg tortilla slash wrap, and then these crepes, is you can have these ready, prepared ahead of time, and stored in the freezer. And then when you want to make a recipe like this or a recipe like the other one, you can just take those out and defrost it. So, and then what I'm showing here is I've made the crepes before. If you've seen one of my earlier, you know, it's one of the earlier videos on my channel. And I use the RX Sugar, which is what that product is. Um, I used the maple syrup one. I didn't have that one to show you because my brother, my brother took it. Um, but I use that as my as my syrup, and so that's protein sparing modified fast compliance uh, compliant because it's just allulose, and uh, in the case of the maple uh, syrup, it's just maple extract. And just a reminder here of what our what the um, first attempt looked like when we use the the egg wrap slash egg tortilla. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, so I finished. The, the crepes, you see them here on the cooling rack. I put them on a cooling rack. I didn't have to do this with the, with the egg wraps, but I put them on the, on the cooling rack uh, because they're wet. And I've been, this is the second 
paper towel and you see the, the moisture that I'm getting out of them. And I'm not sure if I use that in the pie maker, what that moisture would do. So I'm just thinking, you know, refrigerated dough doesn't have moisture like that. So I'm trying to get these dried out as much as, as much as possible. And then the other thing is, uh, I've got this book. This is, this is pretty close to, to being ready, but, um, but I've got the, the mold here and, you know, I want to, I want to fit it there and then I want to bring this over. I want to fit it there. So I'm going to have to have to cut each of these. Um, but like I said, I wanted to get some of the, the wetness out of it. So I don't know. I'm not sure how this wetness is going to behave with the pot pie maker. So we will see. Um, but before I cut those out, I wanted to, um, touch on a couple things with this maker. So there were a couple things that caught my eye. So I just want to do a, a little, uh, highlight here for you. Um, So the first thing that caught my eye was, do you see how you're supposed to crimp the sides? I didn't do that the first time. And this is very pliable. It'll let me, it will let me do that. So that was the first thing I noticed. Um, they call it um, scalloping. So they tell you to scallop the edges. Um, so that was the first thing. And then they call it scallop or overlap the cut section so that the pie ba base fits neatly in the lower cooking surface. Press down gently on the edges of the crust so that they lay against the top of the lower cooking surface. And it's, it's picture G here. And they say that because you don't burn yourself. And then in terms of the amount of filling, they say a third of a cup because they said that'll rise above the edge of the pie maker to help achieve a um, rounded top shape. And it says for denser fillings or meats and fillings that tend to expand during the cooking process, use less than a third of a cup to avoid spillage. And you know, you put your top on like that. We did that the first time. So we were on the right track there and then close firmly. And you see even theirs don't fully close. So I think we were on the right track here. Then this is the one tip using a brush to add some egg wash around the edges of your pie before you close the cover will help the crust remain tight and crisp up while cooking. So I have some egg wash here. So we're going to do that this time. Okay. And let's see if I missed anything else. I've already said about the cooking time. So this says three to five minutes and it says in order to check if it's done cooking, you know, lift the cover. And if it's hot, use a, a pot holder or oven mitts. And, uh, and it says to go ahead and check to see if the crust is done. You see how it's lifting. So it says to open this up and check it is, is fine. And then I'm just looking here. It's saying the actual size of the finished pie will be around four inches in diameter and about two inches deep. So four inches wide, two inches deep. And I'd say that's about what we achieved here with this one. Okay. Don't use metal. That's obvious. We recommend using a wooden nylon or silicone tool, of course. Okay. So those were the things that, that stood out to me. And then, um, I also made note, they have a chicken pot pie, but it's a, it's a traditional one, but I did check to see what that cooking time was. And it said four minutes. So I had, um, based our time based on that. And then I also made note of 
they have this breakfast pie in here, which is pretty keto. It's eggs and bacon and cream. And then the crust, if you did a, uh, you know, a fathead dough or a keto dough, then this here is a keto, keto recipe. Okay. So I just wanted to point those out and let's see, this is still a little wet, but it is what it is. We're going to go with it. So I'm going to, I don't know if, um, this is going to work like, um, the refrigerated dough that you buy. Cause for that, you just press down and you get your circle. So I don't know if I'm going to have to use a pizza cutter or something, but let's see. Look at that. It worked. I'll be darn. Let's do it again because I wasn't sure it was going to work, so I wasn't really pressing. Look at that. Wow. One little side is sticking. Wow. Look at that. I guess I should have done that with the first one. And then I know these are so that you can do this, what they call the scalloping or the overlapping, okay? So now let's, let's do this one with the top. So turn this over and do the same thing. So it looks like the key to this, to getting this cut out, is don't be afraid to be a little assertive. So if you press this down and then go around back and forth, that tends to, to get it. Look at that. Voila. Yay me. Okay. By the way, another little handy thing are these uh, pot holders. These are silicone ones I'm using. I found that's very nice to move this around because this is very hot. And I noticed that it takes a very long time to cool down. And it also catches the spillage. So just a little, little tip there. Okay. So this time. Oh, and let me get this. Oops, I thought that was a, <laughs> let me uh, clean this out a little bit from our first attempt. And I'm sure this doesn't stick. I'm sure this is going to be easy to clean. Yeah, it's coming right out. It's just, this is so hot. I want to be careful not to burn myself. There's just one more piece here I want to get. Oh, I'm making a mess. I'm going to have to clean my kitchen. Definitely got to sweep and mop the floor after the broccoli fiasco and then this. Okay, I got it. All right, so we're pretty clean now. Okay, so let's put this in. We have our pie filling there still. Okay, we'll put this back here. All right, we've got the bottom. And now remember, look at how nice that is. And now remember they said to cross these over. And that's what these slits are for. Okay, so we got it. I hope the camera picked that up. So that's looking just like the book. Yeah, I think you can see that. All right, so now a third of a cup, remember. And I wonder, just for the heck of it, let's be precise. Okay, I'm getting a third of a cup. Okay, I got a third of a cup. Now I'm pushing that down. Perfect. You see how that's perfectly level there? Okay, and now we're putting the top on, and you saw in the book that I showed you, it was literally just putting that like that. Ooh, I caught myself there. That's why they say be careful when you're pressing this down. Okay, and then 
I've got the egg wash here. So I'm going to brush the egg wash here. In fact, you know what? I'm going to brush the egg wash across this because I'm wondering if this is going to help brown it. I'm not sure. Okay, there we go. And then uh, four minutes. And I can already tell here it's even better because you see, you see how we don't have any, how it's closed much more so than with the wrap. So I think this was definitely the way to go, to go with the thinner, the thinner wrap, which is Indigo Neely's um, uh, crepe recipe. So I was mistaken on the first one, but let's see what happens here. When we come back, um, this will have cooked and I will let it cool so that we can cut both of these and, uh, and can compare and contrast. Okay. So we still haven't concluded whether we can make protein sparing modified fast pot pie in this manner with the mini dash maker, but, uh, but we're close to finding out. So stay tuned. Oh my God, you guys, I couldn't wait to come back and, and, and come start this segment again, because I think we have a huge success. So I, I checked it and boy, did I like what I saw. So take a look at this. Oh, and I should get my spatula. Take a look at this. Wow. So I'm curious if, if that is a re uh, the browning effect, if that's as a result of the egg wash I did, or if that's the result of the uh, different recipe for the for the wrap. But anyways, look at that. Um, let me see, this is not, it's too forgiving. I need something a little more rigid. Let's see if this is. You'd think they should give you a silicone um, tool to be able to get in there and get this. So let's see, what's the best tool to take these out? I'm going to try this one again that I used on the crepes. No, I think that you need to be thinner than this one. Hmm. What do I have that's thin that is going to fit that? That's a silicone. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try this one. Okay. Oh, and let me unplug this. Ah. Still seems like this should have come with some sort of utensil to help you get this out. There we go. So I guess a little bit of leakage or that egg white, and I just had to free that. Okay, so having it on there allows me to pull that away and bring these here. So I want this. I can tell you this is a little more puffy than this one. So I can, I can tell this. This here feels a little hollow on the on the top, although it's it's um, it's uh, deflating a little bit. This is definitely thicker, but you know what? I probably should have put that on the um, cooling rack because this is a little wet on the bottom. This is not wet. There's there's moisture from the steam, but the but the bottom is, is firm. So I would say when you take these off, you should put them, you should put them on a cooling rack, but I was anxious to cut into these and, and show them to you. So, so let's do that. All right. This has been cooling for a long time. So let's see what we get. And you hear that? There's parts of it that's crispy, but not all of it. 
You know what? This seems to me more of a hot pocket. We may have just invented something. Th this is a hot pocket. There it is. We did two recipes. I would say use the egg life wrap to make a hot pocket. Yeah. I like this. There we go. Okay, now let's look at the other one. This is still hot because you saw we just took it off, but I wonder if I should let this cool. I don't know. I'm anxious to cut into it. Let's cut into it. This is definitely more of a, of a pot pie. I'd call that a hot pocket. And this is more looking like a pot pie. This is like a pie crust. Now, the one, one thing that I would say is the next time I'd make these, I'd add more liquid. I was afraid that it wouldn't um, hold up if I put too much liquid. But, uh, but how I would have these is I'd probably serve a little gravy over it. But the next time I would add a little bit more, um, a little more of the keto chow gravy to my, to my mixture. So there we have it. I, I think we developed two recipes here. So use Indigo Neely's egg wrap, which she refers to as an egg tortilla, for a hot pocket using the Dash Mini uh, pie maker. And then use her egg crepe uh, recipe for a pot pie. And uh, a couple things before we wrap up, which is I wanted to show you this is how much of the mixture this is how much of the mixture is left, so a third of a cup. So when I'm calculating the macros for these, um, remember it was six ounces of chicken. And, uh, and I did, let's see, I did about a third, uh, let's see, it was about a third of a serving of the keto chow with the uh, chicken stock. And then and then the broccoli. So it's, uh, it's two ounces of chicken, a third of the keto uh, chow chicken soup, and then the broccoli. So, you know, something like this really fits in with the macros. And if you remember, I, want, I was mindful of that. And then um, when I'm calculating the egg wrap in the macros, this is what we had cut away. So this is a pretty good amount that we cut away so this seems to me like it's probably like this was 40% and we cut away 60%. But for calculating, I'll, I'm going to assume it was like 50%. But I did want to show you because this is a, a good amount and you don't, in this you can consume. So don't throw this away. You can make uh, the egg cra crepes with the uh, syrup on this as a breakfast or, you know, part of a meal, I should say, but a breakfast item is, as your meal. So this keep, and so I think that's, that's everything I wanted to cover. And I just had one more thought, which is um, my sister, so I've got, I'm one of nine in my family. Uh, there's six boys and three girls. And um, my, and I'm second to youngest. So I have a brother who's, who's the youngest, I'm second youngest. And, uh, and my sister, who's 10 years old, older, kind of inherited my mom's tradition of making pot pies. So my sister makes pot pies and she freezes them and she, she gives them out. In fact, she gave some as Christmas presents this year. And so, um, so this is something, I, and she doesn't like a lot of crust. So I think this mini dash for her will be awesome. So I'm looking forward to, you know, her and I, um, her making her traditional recipe in it. So she'll take her Pillsbury dough with her mixture and make it. And in four minutes, she's got it. And for me to be able to make my keto one, you know, whether it's regular keto, whether it's protein sparing, modified fast, whether it's carnivore, um, that 
we'll be able to both use this and have a dinner and, and make it. So I, w I had that thought while I was cleaning up the kitchen. So anyways, that's pretty exciting. I can't wait to show her this. I, I think she's going to be, I think she's going to find this cute. And, uh, and I think she's going to ask me to borrow it. Anyways, so there it is. I think we came up with two, two protein spearing modified fast recipes and, and keto recipes for that matter. Because like I said, you could put any mix, any filling in there, and that's a hot pocket. I could see a, a red sauce with uh, some Italian sausage with mozzarella cheese. I could see some ham and cheese, turkey and cheese with some, you know, Dijon mustard, if that suits your fancy, or, uh, you know, whatever mix in there you like. And then this more of the, of the pot pie. And like I said, next time I'll add more liquid to this. Um, so when I consume this, when I serve this, I'll just, um, put the gravy over the top this time and I'll adjust next time. So there you have it. Uh, once again, I hope you're, you're picking up some, some things that help you in your way of eating. So as always, thanks for watching. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.